In the early years, children begin to recognize patterns through guided play or by exploring patterns in everyday life or objects. For example, we can see patterns in quilt covers, we recognize patterns in our daily routines, or we can see patterns in number sequences in mathematics lessons. There are also opportunities to explore patterns in music. We like this example by MeaningfulMama.com who used hearts to represent the beats and straws to represent the rhythm. Students can manipulate straws, but they have to keep to the principle that there must be two counts within a beat. Teachers could clap rhythms and have children identify or repeat the patterns that they hear. In literacy, students could explore patterns in sound by clapping the syllables to words and then identifying the words that share similar patterns. A familiar activity within the primary years classroom is one where students explore patterns in a sequence of attribute blocks and either have to continue the pattern or create a new pattern with the attribute blocks. An adaptation of this or an extension could be to have students identify patterns within a fabric, cultural textiles, or even their everyday environment, and have them recreate the pattern using the attribute blocks, or by drawing on or creating patterns as an art piece for display. Students often will explore patterns in number, for example, by exploring physical representations of numbers with counters or blocks, or using a hundreds charts, or even a multiplication table. A familiar game in the early years that involves pattern recognition and matching is within card games such as snap or memory games. Pattern recognition can also be linked back to data representation by exploring patterns in the presentation of information in graphs. Students can also create their own graphs that represent data and in doing so they're considering exactly what data they need to gather to abstract patterns. Students can also explore patterns in data through science experiments. But to extend on this, students can compare the results of their experiments or their graphs with those of their peers or even as a whole class. Such opportunities allow students to develop skills in comparing and contrasting information and identifying patterns in visual representations of data to make meaning. While students can collect their own data, there are a number of great public data sites that allow students to manipulate and explore data sets and patterns within those data sets to draw inferences. This site draws on many open and available public data sources and has the data already represented as a graph, with the ability to choose between different graph types. In this example, I'm looking at the life expectancy across countries against the fertility rate. And what I really like is that you can actually slide the bar across the bottom from left to right and see the data change over time. In having the graph already represented, it means that you can also really spend a lot more time exploring the patterns within the data and the significant changes. If students notice something quite unique or interesting in the data set, then this could also be paired with research. For example, in this context, students might notice quite a drastic change for a particular country in a year. While recognising patterns in the data is fundamental, so too are the questions that we ask, or the questions we get students to think about. Students need to carefully consider the types of data they want to collect and ask themselves, will the data that they are collecting provide them with the information to solve their problem? They might also ask which is the best way to represent the data in order to make it meaningful. And when looking at the representations of data, what does the data tell us? But also when looking at data and representations, students sh should also be thinking and considering what new questions they have about the information that they see.